In this lecture, we'll create our first shell script. But before, let's get familiarized ourselves with navigation in the file system. At the moment, we're located in our home directory, which we can see by executing pwd. The path consists of several parts. The first slash denotes the so-called root directory, the highest level path on the file system. Then come subpaths, slash home, slash my username. We can change our directory to root directory by executing cd, slash and see where we are, pwd. We can go back to our home directory by executing cd without arguments. We can also change to our home directory using special notation for it, cd space tilde. And this will have the same effect as cd with no arguments. Let's now create a new directory here. Let's call it work. Note that names in Linux are case sensitive, and so work capitalized and work with small letters would be different directories. So they succeeded, and if I try to create it again, this will fail, of course, because it exists. And now we can remove the redundant directory by executing remove directory command rmd work and done. The rmd command only works on empty directories and in our case it was empty so it succeeded. Let's go inside work. cd work and see the current location in the file system pwd again. You can also see that my prompt, which is the first part of every line in the terminal, is changing to reflect my current location. How prompt looks very much depends on your local configuration. In my case that I'm using Linux Mint, it contains the username, add my machine name, which I call local, and then followed by the current path. This will most probably look different for you if you use a different distribution type, but you can change it to your liking. In our current directory, we'll create a new shell script called run.sh using an editor called nano. We'll type nano run.sh to create our first script. We will cover nano in the next section more details. Most probably, it is already available for your distribution. If not, we will need it for the next lectures. So it is a good time to install it using York Package Manager. I will execute the command now, and it opens me the editor view. We will start with the shebang sequence, which is a hash followed by exclamation mark. This will tell the interpreter that will read my program that I'm going to use the executable slash bin slash shell, the application, that will run my script. Slash bin slash sh is the file in slash bin directory that is a symbolic link to my corresponding shell application that I use. Let's finish our script and I will show you what I mean by the symbolic link. In general, the shebang sequence has a few more usages which you may encounter in other scripts. Feel free to search for its usages in the internet. For this script, we will add one command to print a string. We will use the command echo with the argument hello world, of course. We put the argument to the echo command in quotation marks, but strictly speaking in this example, we could skip it also. Script in Linux help to automate routine work. You would use them if you plan to execute a set of commands on a regular basis. Putting these commands in a script would save you a lot of time. An example usage for shell scripts is configuration script that is run before compiling the source code of an application. The script would check that all dependencies are in place for your computer without the need to run these hundreds of commands manually. Or maybe you want to rename a bunch of files. Doing it manually for each file might be a very cumbersome job, but with a script you would be able to iterate over each file easily. We can now save the file. I'm pressing Ctrl O to save, Enter to confirm, and Ctrl X to quit. Let's have a quick look at the shell executable that we put in the first line of our script. It is a symbolic link to bash shell executable that I'm using by default. It is shown by the arrow sign. Symbolic links help to manipulate file names without changing the original files. It is very useful when you would be dealing with versions of libraries 
or in the case like ours, when you might have several shell executables installed and you want to switch between them. In my case, the file links to bash executable and if you use a different type of shell like TC shell, Z shell or something else, it will probably link to that shell executable. Let's now try to execute our script. It is now in our current directory. We see the file exists and we can run the script by executing dot slash and the name of our script. But oops, it failed. The reason is that by default newly created files only have permissions on reading and writing. They do not have executable permissions, something that we need to run shell scripts. We can easily fix it by using the change mod ch mod command. ch mod plus x run dot sh. This will add the executable permission to our script. And now we can run it. And this time it succeeded and prints the hello world. As you may notice, chmod command has a different set of arguments compared to the ls command that we discussed in the previous lecture. The first argument plus x specifies the changes and permissions for the file. And the last argument is the file name for which we want to change permissions. We want to add executable permissions, which is denoted by a plus sign followed by the permissions, x in our case. We could also remove this permission by typing chmod minus x run.sh. And this will now remove the executable permission. Now let's make the file executable only for the owner of the file, which is you. We can do it by typing chmod user plus x run.sh, where you in front of the plus sign says permissions for the user of the file. Other options include setting permissions for group, g, and others, o, such as I could do chmod user group other plus x executable run.sh. Now let's have a look at our permissions. And now it has executable for all type of users. We can remove the executable permission for only group and other chmod go minus x run.sh. Let's print it again. And the permissions changed. And you might add or remove read and write permissions in the same manner. chmod other group minus write run.sh. It might be a bit confusing in the beginning that u denotes the owner of the file and o denotes other users. Remember this difference. Let's run our script again and see our hello world. Now that we typed similar commands several times, let's have a look at useful tips on using the terminal. First thing is called tap auto completion. When you start typing a command such as chmod or executing a script such as run.sh, you can type a few first characters and press tab. And this will complete my line. Let's try this on change mode command. I start typing chm, press the tab and nothing happens. The reason for this is that there are multiple commands starting with the chm sequence. If I press the tab once again, it will show me the list of available commands starting with the sequence. If you use another shell such as zshell, it may behave slightly different. You could search in the internet for tab auto completion for your shell and get familiar with how it works for you. Another useful feature is the history of commands you run. So far we typed a bunch of commands already and they are all saved in the internal history. We can run the command that you executed just a few minutes ago without typing all the arguments again by navigating in the history. We can press up or down to navigate in the history. Or I can go down, going down in the history. We can also search in the history by pressing Ctrl R combination and start typing the text that we want to search for. This will find my text in the latest commands that I typed in. If I press Ctrl R again, I will go back to the next occur to the previous occurrence of the text. We could also scroll the terminal window up and down either by using the mouse 
or I can use the key combination shift page up and page down. Now we can also copy paste a string. I can double click on some command that I used before, chmod in our case and press the middle button to paste. Alternatively I can of course select the selection with the mouse and use the same middle click to paste. If I triple click on some space in the terminal it will select the whole line. It isn't really useful in the terminal usage but it might be useful elsewhere. In the current line where I'm typing in my commands I can go to the beginning of my line by pressing Ctrl A and I can go to the end of the line by pressing Ctrl E combination. I can go one word left with Ctrl left and I can go one word right pressing Ctrl right. You can also find many more useful shortcuts in the attached cheat sheet. Make sure to check it out. In this section you learn how to create directories navigating the file system using cd command, how to create and edit a file and change its permissions. You also learn how to use the terminal window to execute scripts, use tab autocompletion and keyboard shortcuts. In the next lecture we will look at most common file viewers and editors that can be used from the terminal.